my standards of what worked and what didn't work were changed. It wasn't on the basis of the aesthetics. It was more on the basis of healing, mm -hmm. more on the basis of how dance could be a healing force. Mm -hmm. I began working with people with cancer. I began mm -hmm. uh, doing all kind, choosing various projects that I felt had a healing uh, dimension to it. Great. So, so it, it did. It, it definitely... Yeah, it, it catapulted me into right. another uh, direction of exploring po new possibilities of the role of dance. Right. So, so then when you, you had a reoccurrence, yeah. so then what happened? Well, this is a little spooky. Uh-oh. <laughs> because uh, 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 in my uh, ex explorations, I noticed that... Uh, one of the areas of dance that I hadn't really paid attention to was the use of imagery. Mm. In other words, I was able to make a connection between movement and feelings. Mm -hmm. For example, I could do this, and it would elicit one feeling mm -hmm. state, but all I had to do was this, yeah. and it would elicit another movement. Right. Or, or I could put my arm up, and it would elicit one movement. I could bring it down fast. Right. and it would. So I got a pretty good... Uh, a set of criterias around the feedback process between movement and feeling. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't have uh, experience with was investigating, I feel sad because, and that because mm -hmm. brings up an image. I feel sad because, and you might feel sad and it would bring up a different image. Yes. And I began to notice that in my children's classes, they couldn't really talk about what was happening to them, but a lot of things were happening that I saw and I didn't understand. So I would just say to them, draw a picture of your dance. And they started drawing and all sorts of things started coming up and I started looking at those images and I saw things that, some things that were horrifying, some things mm -hmm. that were delightful. And then I thought, well, when I listen to adults talk about their experience, it's very boring. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with I, what I was experiencing. So then I started saying to them, draw what mm -hmm. came up for you. Mm -hmm. And then give it, give it words. Mm -hmm. And so the whole idea of what I call psychokinetic visualizations mm -hmm. began to enter into uh, my work as a teacher, as an educator. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that became very important to me. And uh, when my cancer reoccurred, I said, I'm going to use imagery now. I'm going to try something. I asked the doctor, I said, could you give me a month before you do anything? Because I, I don't want to have another operation and I won't, don't want to go through chemotherapy. Let me try something. So I started working with imagery and I started dancing uh, the things that came up for me and a lot of stuff came up around my dark side. Mm -hmm. A lot of anger, a lot of, of uh, uh, just sheer anger. And, and the imagery had to do with uh, the Holocaust yes. and my feeling of uh, guilt that it was happening to them and I wasn't yes. able to stop it. Yes. And a lot of the experiences I had uh, as a child experiencing anti-Semitism came up for me. And I, I was just howling with despair. Yes. And uh, so that was, uh, that was a tremendous release Yes. Of uh, pent up yes. stuff. Yes, not somatizing. Yeah, mm -hmm. very traumatizing. Mm -hmm. And out of that experience, uh, I developed what I call the five part process of healing is first you uh, confront mm -hmm. what is the matter with you, and then you release, and then there's change, and then there's transformation, and then there's application. And once I got that, that clarity of a process, I was able to work with it. And uh, this is what's spooky, uh, is that I, I arrested the cancer. Well, that's not spooky at all. It is spooky because Why? I don't really have a, a, an objective scientific understanding of it other than um, it was not the first time. I mean, I, I got in touch with uh, the noetic science people who did uh, uh, an eight-year study 
of using visualizations as healing, which I didn't know about. So I found out that this was a direction that other people had been going in that I wasn't aware of. Um, and, that it, and I still can't, except in a book I have called Dance as a Healing Force, Dr. Samuels writes an essay, uh, and he's a doctor, about how it works from, from a medical point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still use that process for growth and change. And, um, well, I have, I have a theory. I could... Yeah, I don't have a theory. Do you want me to put my yeah, theory? Yeah, I'd be interested. Okay, I have two theories. Okay, no, one theory is the polyvagal stress. The polyvagal system, which is here, is, uh, it all has to do with stress. So it goes from here, down the back of the ear, down the side here, down into the chest, heart area, and into the intestines. Mm. And so that it, and there's a big theory about this, and the, the, uh, there's an evolution of how we handle stress. And so you're, you're describing, in a certain way, the, the repository of the accumulation of stress mm. in your system. And so, so that would, in a sense, be part of the, the, um, the whole metamorphosis of the stress altogether. But then you're pointing to something very important in it, that when something is not emotionally confronted, from my point of view mm -hmm. also, that it becomes somatized. In other words, it becomes symptomatic. The system will take on the, the, uh, the gestalt because mm -hmm. it doesn't have the emotional uh, outlet. Mm -hmm. So it will, it will... Impound. It, it will, exactly. It will impound and do all that. So the fact that you... In fact, when I heard about your cancer, you know, I was thinking about the diaspora. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about the the level of generational um, um, symptomology mm -hmm. in the accumulation mm -hmm. of, of trauma and karma, et cetera, et cetera. And so when you're describing, and it's interesting that a, a one generation can carry it and release it. Mm. And so the things that you're saying um, mm -hmm. uh, make total sense to me mm -hmm. in relation to the fact that you um, were able to um, to re, to energetically redirect mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and have the appropriate uh, mm -hmm. expression of of the mm -hmm. feeling tones and emotional mm -hmm. uh, containment, mm -hmm. and you see the helplessness of the Jew, particularly in the diaspora, is legion, mm -hmm. and so the the impounding of all of that mm -hmm. is really generational, which mm -hmm. we see in Israel, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. which we will take up in a little while, mm -hmm. but at any rate, you. So everything you're saying makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. But I'm also very interested in the fact that you went ahead and you did a naked performance mm -hmm. with, the, uh, with the, um, the whole situation in relation to your... Mm -hmm. So can you say anything about that? Because that was... I mean, talk about Isadora and being courageous. I mean, I associate Isadora with courage. Mm -hmm. And I mean, my goodness. I mean, when you think of what you have without shame mm -hmm. and without apologia, mm -hmm. you know, that you've said, okay, here it is. Mm -hmm. the, the, these, this, is the, this is what the mm -hmm. body looks like now. Mm -hmm. So can you um, take us there? No, I remember at uh, one point I got a call from uh, UC Hospital and they wanted me to come and, and talk to people who had colostomies. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one woman wrote me a letter and she said, how do you deal with it? And I wrote back and said, will you tell me how do you not deal with it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm good. You know, that's essentially, what do you do? Just stop living? Yeah. Or do you say this is part of life? Um, well, you made lemonade again. Yeah. <laughs> it's part of life. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, yeah. But what compelled you to do the new dance um, with the stoma? I mean, that's so interesting and so important. Uh, well, E.O. Stubblefield, who was, did, did all the artwork on me, she, uh, she had been to the site before I had been there. I, I didn't know those sites until I got there. And she put a lot of uh, branches on my head, and then she painted me blue like she was bringing mm. the sky down. Mm. And so uh, I had to be nude. 
mm. because I had to fit into that environment. So th there was never a question about it. It was an artistic choice. And whenever I make an artistic choice, um, I don't question it. You see, that has to go down in, in human history. <laughs> In terms of, again, the, the conviction and the courage to, yeah. <laughs> that's it. I mean, that, that's just huge. It really yeah. is. I mean, you know, in a sense, you've, you've conquered territory. I mean, that alone would be enough. <laughs> but, but of course, you've gone into, you know, such broad capabilities. And I want to come back to the, uh, first of all, you were just in Israel. Yeah. Okay, so you did an event in Israel. Several. 